video games can offer a lot more than just a casual playthrough. From modding to speedrunning, there's tons of ways to enjoy your favorite game. Sometimes you might even read headlines like Speedrunner beats 15-year-old world record and you think to yourself, why do people care so much about who can beat a video game faster than everyone else? Wait, wait, wait. Well, when you truly love a game, it's understandable to look for more ways to enjoy it. Usually, when a speedrunner achieves a new mind-blowing record, that achievement stands on top of years and years of a community working together to find new strategies, glitches and tricks. But sometimes, it's not about how fast you can beat something, but about being able to beat it to begin with. You see, over the years, something amazing has evolved in the community of Geometry Dash. An almost psychotic craze to constantly push the very limits of what is considered possible. Geometry Dash is a side-scrolling platformer that comes with its very own level editor. This means anyone with the right amount of time can sit down and create a user level for the world to play. You can find anything from art levels to mini games to whatever this is. Wow, good job. This one goes into the art drawer. There you go. All of these levels share a common trait, however. They are meant to be fun and fair to play. But there's another kind of level I haven't mentioned yet. Levels that were made by creators who clearly had no intention of playing by the rules of the game. They are creations so hard that if you would ask a player in 2014 if anyone could ever beat any of these, they would tell you to stop stiffing glue and get a grip. Hey dude, what's up? You see, these levels never were meant to be completed. To get these levels on the servers, the creators obviously had to use cheats or glitches to verify that they have beaten the level at least once. This means that those levels never actually were beaten legitimately. They probably were made just as a showcase or to flex someone's non-existent skill. Over the years, however, something insane happened. Players realized that maybe just maybe, with enough willpower and determination, they could beat these levels. And what followed was a quest to overcome cheaters and show the world what's possible in this game. Before I can show you how we went from this to this, I first want to welcome you to the realm of Geometry Dash. In this game, your one and only goal is to reach the end of the level without touching the obstacles that come your way. This includes ramming into a wall, touching spikes, getting mauled by gears, or my personal favorite, all of them at once. You control this little shape here, which can change into tons of different forms depending on which portal you go through. I could spend 15 minutes explaining what all of these different game modes do, however, I value your sanity, so I'll keep it as simple as possible. This game comes with 21 base levels that slowly introduce you to all of the game's mechanics. But where the game really shines is in the user levels. As I explained earlier, anyone can create a level filled with whatever their imagination can come up with. With this freedom, however, comes an important decision. You can make a fun, slow and easily readable level that can be enjoyed by any player, or you can choose to make it challenging for more experienced players. But what makes certain levels harder than other levels? Where does the difficulty come from? In levels that are considered more easy, you have tons of space and room for errors. You can jump here without dying, you can press these orbs whenever you feel like it. In ship parts you can fly up high or low since there's nothing stopping you from doing so. But in hard levels, let's say an extreme demon level, which by the way is the hardest difficulty a level can receive, it's like you're playing in one of those Japanese game shows where there's this wall that moves towards you and your only chance of survival is to fit through these gaps. Just like in that game show, this is the main source of difficulty in this game. Hard levels will never give you the freedom to choose how to play them. There is one set path and it's really, really, really unforgiving. One click with the wrong timing means you fail. I mean, what looks harder to you? This or this? Back in 2014, this was basically seen as impossible. When you have to fly through a tight corridor of spikes, the community calls it straight flying. Straight flying is just one of many techniques that the community has developed over the years to push the limits of difficulty in this game. From 2013 to 2022, a lot of things have changed. And if you allow me to steal a bit of your time, I would love to share the story of how the community overcame the hardest known levels and then pushed the limits further than anyone could have imagined.
Geometry Dash today is filled with so many amazing levels. The community truly has done some amazing things over the years, but of all kinds of levels, one kind truly stands out. It's almost impossible to talk about the game today without mentioning extreme demons at least once. These truly are the peak of what a player can beat in this game. They seem to invoke a sense of hype in the community, no other levels can. The insane amount of skill required to beat them gives them a special place in the community. So much so, that over the years we have created what's known as the official demon list. This is a list ranking the hardest possible levels the community knows of. If a level appears on this list, it means someone took the immense time and effort to go through the pain of beating it legitimately with proof. After submitting it, the level gets ranked by multiple of the community's best players to try and give it the most accurate place in the list. The list keeps track of 150 of the hardest levels in the game right now. Today, the Demon List is not only a place to archive the hardest levels, but also a place to marvel at the community's most impressive feats. Over 4,924 players have submitted a record to the list. But the community wasn't always that interested in hard levels. You see, it actually used to be the complete opposite. To show what I mean, we have to go back to 2013, where players actually disliked levels if they were too hard. It's insane how much the community has changed over the years. Back then, the general idea behind levels was a completely different one. Only a very small handful of people actually focused on creating levels that pushed the limits of player skill. And those levels usually got heavily disliked by the community for being too hard. Because of this, from 2013 to 2014, the hardest levels floating around were Zone's Hell series or Majako's Theria Demoness. These levels featured insane timings for the time, mixed with really tight ship gaps, and sometimes they would even abuse bugs in the physics engine and include them in the actual gameplay of the level. If you consider the fact everyone was playing on their phones to beat these levels, it was really impressive for the time. <sighs> A bit too impressive. You see, if you create your own level in Geometry Dash and want to upload it to the service for others to play, you need to complete it at least once. This is what's called a verification, and it's there to avoid levels that are just plain impossible ending up on the service. But, just like in real life, if there's rules, some people will break them. As you can imagine, this did not stop people from finding ways to upload borderline impossible levels to the servers. Using things like cheat engine or secret ways, it was kinda easy to bypass the security step. It was very common back in the day to see hard levels get verified illegitimately. This means creators who did this back then basically lied to players, claiming that they beat them legitimately. But looking back now, we basically know there's no way any of these creators beat their own levels the intended way. This basically made those levels empty vessels, waiting for their first victor. Me comrade? <laughs> no, not you. Okay. And because of this, all of these levels were pushed into the same corner in the community. They were known as the impossible levels. Levels like Silent Club, Ice Carbon Diablo X, Ice Carbon Seussed. They were written off as too insane to even attempt to play because they were cheated. But to some people, when something is deemed impossible, to them it's just another reason to try even harder. The year had just turned 2015. A creator named G-Boy releases a new level fittingly called Cataclysm. The level proudly showcased a hell theme with its bright red burning colors. What made this level stand out so much, to me, was the first wave section in the beginning. This section features the wave game mode, but not in a way that players were used to back then. The way the wave works is you have to hold your mouse button to ascend in a 45 degree angle. What made this part so hard is not only the fact that you have to navigate through these tight gaps, but it's also mixed with mini portals. This is a portal that turns the player into a mini version of the game mode they are currently in. As a cube, you turn into a tiny cube and as a result have way tinier jumps. This portal affects every game mode differently, with the most ridiculous example being the wave game mode. It forces the wave to ascend and descend in a way steeper angle it usually does, making it extremely hard to control. If you think this looks hard, maybe you can understand why this was just stupid for the time. Constantly switching between mini and big wave made this section incredibly difficult. And even if you made it through here, the next part looks like this. Back in 2015, when I and many others thought this level was impossible, the first wave was the main reason I believed it was. If the level had something this hard in the beginning, what would the other 90% look like? Upon release, everyone was talking about the level, with every Skype group chat filled with discussions about how incredibly difficult the level was. When it comes to difficulty, 
this was a step above other levels for the time. It quickly became known just as another impossible level and what catapulted it into that list was the fact it was almost immediately determined that G-Boy had cheated the verification. This meant the level had just turned into another empty vessel with nobody to claim it. I was around back then and to me personally, it just seemed like the level would slowly fade away like all other impossible levels. Too hard to even attempt. Just another showcase of what the theoretical limit to gameplay could be. But little did I know that this level planted a seed that would eventually grow into the biggest level craze to ever touch this game. You see, five players were actually playing the level. Their names were Giron David, Sandstorm, Sephir, Riot and Cyclic. They didn't care about what the community thought. To them, it was a personal fight to see how far they could get into the level. All five of them showing off their progress on their YouTube channels at the time turned this entire thing into a race. A race to see who could reach the farthest. The community noticed this happening. All of a sudden, a lot of people tuned into streams of them playing and practicing the level, with some of them proudly showcasing their personal records in the 60 and 70% range. It turns out after thousands of attempts, this first wave part could be done semi-consistently with muscle memory. This straight flight at 40% was difficult, but it wasn't too long, so it also could be passed kinda consistently. My favorite part has to be this last ship part at 64%. The way the music climaxes makes it feel like a real fight to pass these incredibly tight ship gaps. Thinking about it, this level really pushed the limits of the ship game mode for the time. The race continued for weeks, with everyone reaching records far into the level. Nobody could believe that people were actually making progress, and then, out of nowhere, over 15,000 attempts in, Cyclic got this run. To this day, this is one of the most influential moments of the entire game's history. Back in 2015, this was monumental. A level so hard it had to be cheated to be verified actually was beaten by someone legit. And it wasn't just him. On the 14th of March 2015, Giron David became the second ever person to beat Cataclysm legit. A few days after that, Riot and Sandstorm both beat it on the same day. It was like a curse had been lifted. All of a sudden this level wasn't as impossible as it seemed at first. These were the first place to beat it. And they definitely weren't the last. Today, Cataclysm is sitting at spot 325 on the official demon list. This means since 2015, 324 levels have surpassed its difficulty. As someone who was around back then, this is astonishing to me. Over 721 people including myself, have beaten Cataclysm. Which goes to show, once something is proven to be possible, a lot more people are willing to try. It just takes this one person to break the ice. And in this case, it was cyclic. Him beating Cataclysm caused a paradigm shift. It made everyone look back at all the other levels that were deemed impossible and see them with a different eye. And that's exactly what Riot, one of the first for victors, did. After spending over 30,000 attempts on Cataclysm, he decided to go a step further. Oh my god! Oh my god! Ah! This is Ice Carbon Diablo X, a level by a mysterious creator who obviously used cheats and secret ways to verify his levels. This is why, just like Cataclysm, Diablo X was considered an impossible level. However, it differs a bit from Cataclysm. It's not the entire level that poses a challenge. The main reason it was considered an impossible level was because of these insanely tight mini ship parts and straight flying sections. Back when it was released in 2014, people didn't have the skill to beat this. And this is why it took over a year for someone like Riot to come along and finish the entire thing. You see, Riot beat Ice Carbon Diablo X just three days after beating Cataclysm. In just two weeks, the community had beaten the two most legendary demon levels ever. This was such an exciting time to be in the community. It felt like the roof of Jumpy Dash was just blown wide open. Before May 2015, people roughly thought they knew where the skill ceiling of the game was, but Cyclic and Riot just took it higher than anyone ever thought it would go. 
I can't state enough how hard it is to beat these levels. The immense skill required to not only remember the entire level, but to hit all the timings, straight fly your ship through these gaps, navigate the obnoxiously hard wave sections, it's something you don't just learn overnight. And I'm really sorry to ruin this, but for one of these two players, it actually was a bit too good to be true. One of them had cheated their success, however it is not yet the right time to reveal who. The entire community had just experienced the absolute bliss of what an extreme demon level can bring to the game. Everything about them was exciting. Watching good players attempt these live on stream quickly became the most popular content in the community. This inspired tons of new players to pick up hard levels and get better. What followed these events was a quest for perfection. Who can one-up these insane feats and beat an even harder level? And this is where the community came in. All of a sudden, new levels were popping up everywhere, from supersonic to ultimate phase, and eventually the next big milestone in player skill, a level known as Bloodbath. After Cataclysm and Ice Carbon Diablo X were conquered, Riot decided to lead the push for the next big challenge that would border on the boundaries of what was known to be possible at the time. The goal for this level was to go above and beyond the challenge that Cataclysm posed. And what better way to do this than to get into contact with the original creator of Cataclysm and make a spiritual sequel to the level. That is what Black Buff is a level to fill the void above Cataclysm. Since it was considered the hardest level ever beaten, the only way to one-up the difficulty is to dethrone Cataclysm as the hardest level. And Riot was going to be the one to verify it. A creator named Wio Wio Tio gathered 11 other creators and together they created a level that visually was set to build upon what Cataclysm started. The level was finished at the end of June in 2015. This was two months after Cataclysm had been first conquered. After receiving the finished level, Riot was allowed to change anything in the gameplay. If a part was too easy, he would buff it. He did this to ensure that the level would just barely scrape on what was thought to be possible at the time. If Riot was able to verify this, it would be without a doubt the hardest level to ever be beaten legitimately in Geometry Dash. So that's what he set out to do. Riot would begin streaming attempts live on his Twitch channel. This would mark the beginning of a one and a half month long journey to verify this insane level. The level had everything Cataclysm had, but even harder. Insanely precise timings, stupidly hard and long straight fly sections, ridiculously tight wave gaps, and all of that stretched over two minutes of gameplay. To say this was a daunting task would be an understatement, especially for back then. Remember how I said Cataclysm pushed the limits for the ship game mode? Well, Bloodbath is that, but on steroids. The hardest parts to pass in this level are Vermilion's Gravity Ball, Michigan's entire part, and Etza's crazy ship section. The reason Vermilion's Gravity Ball is so hard is because these timings are insanely tight. What makes it worse is that they aren't even synced to the song, so you have to visually predict when to click, which looks easy at 0.5 speed, but is surprisingly difficult at normal speed. The Gravity Ball, by the way, is a game mode that changes the gravity of the level upon player input. You click and it makes the player fly upwards because the gravity changed. Michigan's part definitely has a really big impact on how difficult the level is. This gameplay gives you no mercy. One tiny missed timing and you're a goner. By the way, this is the UFO game mode. It works similar to Flappy Bird, where clicking gives you a tiny jump midair. The hardest part of the level definitely has to be Atza's part though. 79% is infamous for being a run killer. You're 80% into this impossible goliath of a level and Atza decides to throw this at you. Just overall everything in this level wants to kill you, which made it pretty obvious from the start that this definitely was harder than Cataclysm and by a long shot at that. The entire creating team behind this level did an amazing job at creating a spiritual successor to Cataclysm. After the team was done, it was now time for Riot to finish the job. But something was different this time. You see, the level being a spiritual successor to Cataclysm's legacy carried a lot of weight behind it. It quickly spread by word of mouth alone that Riot was trying to verify something even harder. And people showed up. Gathering over 1,300 consecutive viewers at some point, he set out to stream his journey to legitimately beat Bloodbath. I was around back then, 
I was in those streams. I can tell you that the feeling of watching someone attempt something ridiculously hard with hundreds of others in a chat room was magical. It was like Riot was a sole lonely knight at the forefront of the community, attempting to slay a beast none of us could even imagine to tackle. So, everyone cheered for Riot. So much, in fact, that every time he got an attempt that went kind of far into the level, people would start spamming GO in the Twitch chat. This is a sort of tradition that to this day is still around in the community. When the streamer gets far, you spam GO. When Riot got really far, the viewers spiked and everyone watched the percentage bar on the top creep closer and closer to 100 in anticipation to see if this is the final attempt. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, help me. This time, it just was meant to be. Out of all the successes and victories you see in this game, there's hundreds if not thousands of attempts that end like this one. A devastating mistake. Sometimes you just can't pull it through. Imagine dying at the last part of a level after you've made it past all the hardest parts. One misclick has the power to take everything away. Over the one and a half month long verification process, Riot would make it past 50% countless times. The further you get, the higher the pressure to perform. Suppressing that pressure is a skill that to this day is one of the most important things to master when it comes to beating extreme demons. And on the 12th of August 2015, Riot once again got really far into the level. And as he entered the final part, with people spamming their ghosts in chat, it all came down to the last few percent. Oh my god! So many of us were part of that one and a half month long journey and if you would have told any of us that seven years later this level wouldn't even be in the top 200 anymore, we wouldn't have believed you. Remember Cyclic? I showed you how he was the first person to beat Cataclysm legitimately. It seems that just like Riot, Cyclic was working on his own little project at the same time. And the level's name was Sonic Wave. Just like Bloodbath one-upped Cataclysm, this level one-upped Bloodbath by a lot. Rather than explaining why this level was deemed so hard, I think I'll just show you. You see these boxes? I'm using a special cheat that allows me to see the hitboxes of objects around the player. If the player's hitbox intersects any of these, the player crashes and the attempt is over. These are the hitboxes in Sonic Wave. The precision needed for this level is incredible. You might have noticed that I'm mainly showing the wave gameplay, but this is because 75% of this level is wave only. There's a reason for this, but that is a topic for another video. Ah! No! Please! I'm gonna get to it one day! The interesting thing about this level is that there's actually two versions. A light blue one and a dark blue one. Cyclic released the light blue version of this level on his account. With it, he uploaded a verification video to his YouTube channel. But the video came with an asterisk. In the description, he claimed that the video contained a splice. A splice is where you record the gameplay in multiple segments and then cut them together in an editing software to make it seem like one legit playthrough. He claimed that he'd done this because he had recording issues with the actual completion. Instead of beating it again, he just spliced together a run from zero and a run that starts somewhere later in the level. When that video came out, it certainly raised some eyebrows because it basically claimed a legit achievement without the proof. But it was cyclic. May I remind you again, this was the person who beat Cataclysm, he had a giant backlog of past achievements and he was a well-known and trusted player, so nobody really thought something of it. It was just a recording issue, it's something that we've all run into in the past. At that moment, people were more focused on how impressive he was for beating the level to begin with. Sonic Wave was, and to this day is, an impressive feat of endurance and precision. And once again, it seemed like no matter what other players did, they would always stand in the shadow of Cyclic and his inhuman skill. What happened next, however, nobody really expected. On July 19th, 2015, Sonic Wave received an update. This included changing the color scheme to a darker blue and more impressively, it made it way harder.
This was absurd. The update to Sonic Wave super buffed it to such a difficulty that to this day in 2022, the level is still sitting at spot 61 on the official demon list. This means for 7 years straight, only 60 levels have surpassed its difficulty, which is mind blowing. The confusion about the splice in the light blue version now turned into a very subtle suspicion in players' minds. Is it even okay? To ask if this was legit, Psychic was so well respected that people didn't dare to think something was off. So people just took it at face value and believed Psychic. Until August 7th. On this day, Psychic would again update Sonic Wave. And the strangest thing was, the updated version had nothing to do with the other two versions. This is what it got updated to. What was going on? With the third update to the level, Psychic also deleted all his other levels and began the process of deleting all traces of himself from the internet. Before he left, however, he gave Riot this message on Skype. Please make an exposing video on the forums that every level on my YouTube channel was either hacked or cut. The streams that I have made were all pre-recorded and I'm going to delete everything related to GD, including this Skype account. Bye. What a bombshell. Psychic was seen as the best player in the community. For him to drop something like that on us, to this day, kind of feels off. The entire thing is so weird and oddly done that it left me and I think a lot of other people very confused. Even Riot, when this whole thing came out, believed that something was off about this. I don't believe that he's actually, this is actually real. It's gotta be real because remember he also deleted no. the whole factory. No, no, dude. Factory. However, to this day, we don't really know what happened. Did he actually cheat everything? Was the best player a fraud? This, again, is a topic for another video. What we do know now for certain is that this meant Giron David was actually the first person to ever beat Cataclysm legitimately. I wonder how this felt, knowing that you actually were the first person to do it, thinking someone else did it before you. It must feel kind of good, but also have a very bittersweet taste to it. This also meant that, once again, history had sadly repeated itself. The moment Psychic exposed himself, Sonic Wave became an empty husk. Cheated. Just like Cataclysm and all the other impossible levels. The past few levels in this video all had specific parts that stood out for their difficulty. But Sonic Wave just overall in its entirety seems to be the main problem. It was just pure brute force and wave skill. The wave game mode was the newest game mode at the time, which means people really didn't have the experience to consistently navigate all of these gaps for over two minutes. You might have noticed already that there's one thing that stands out however, and it's what we in the community call fakes. A fake is when the level offer places gameplay elements that kill you if you trust them. The simplest example for this is with orbs. These are tiny floating spheres that depending on their color, affect the player upon player input. If you click your mouse the moment your player intersects with the blue orb, for example, your gravity gets changed. The yellow orb just makes you jump high and so on. Easier levels in the game all have a linear path that is easily readable, but in hard levels, creators intentionally try to trick your brain into clicking when you really shouldn't. This means that people have to learn the entire level and remember which orbs are fakes and which ones aren't to pass the entire thing. But fakes don't always come in the form of mischievously placed orbs. Sometimes, the creator just fakes entire walls, or puts an invisible floor on top of a spike so they don't actually kill you if you touch them. This is what Psychic did in Sonic Wave, and it's part of why the level is so difficult. While playing, it's hard to see what you can touch and what you can't touch. To pass this level, it means to learn exactly which walls are solid and which ones are fakes, and then perfectly executing the wave game mode on top of that. For over one year, the level would remain completely dormant. It was just too hard, too punishing, too long. People just didn't have the endurance and precision to make it anywhere in the level. That is until once again, a select few players stepped up and gave it their A-game. Mefewe, Sonix, and you guessed it, Riot. Just like with Cataclysm, Mefewe, Sonix and Riot all began grinding Sonic Wave around the same time. All three showed impressive progress and once again this turned into a sort of race to be the first. If completed, this would be the biggest jump in difficulty yet. It took one and a half months for Bloodbath to be verified, but it took an entire year for players in the community to get good enough to even have the confidence to beat Sonic Wave. And 
because the level remained completely unchallenged at the top for over one year, combined with the giant controversy of beating a cyclic level, people were eagerly awaiting to see someone pull it off. It seemed that finally, after a year, these players had caught up with the extreme difficulty that Cyclic tried to pass off as his legit achievement at first. Finally, players were getting somewhere with progress steadily creeping closer to 100 every day. So many attempts were poured into this with the absolute worst incident being Mefewa's infamous fail. No! Oh, 98! 98! 98! No! No! 98%. Dying at the very last part after you made it through the entire thing to this day is one of the worst fails the community has ever seen. But it also was the first time someone actually would have beaten it. If we would scroll over just a bit, you would be able to see the finish line. He was only a brink away to finally give the level some closure, but unfortunately, that was his one and only chance to be the first. On November 25th, 2016, over 495 days after the level was released, it happened. Sunex had done it. He had beaten a cheated level so difficult and extreme, it took people over a year to catch up with the skill that's required for it. To this day, this still remains one of the most impactful moments in Geometry Dash history. Players growing up to eventually overcome cheaters is still one of my favorite things to ever happen in this community. It felt like Sonic Wave finally received its closure. From 2016 to today, only 60 levels have managed to trump Sonic Wave in difficulty. Some of the biggest and most historic being Zodiac and Bloodlust. They all have history just as rich, but one of those 60 levels was a bit more special than other ones. I already mentioned it at the start of this video. It wasn't built in the new era of Geometry Dash, and it for certain wasn't meant for the players back then. You see, Earlier, when I explained how the original impossible levels came to be, I mentioned one particular level that was so outrageously difficult that even back in 2014, people basically knew it was cheated. The level's name is Silent Club. It was built by someone called Black P2S Full all the way back in 2014. This was even before Cataclysm in the beginnings of the game. It remained dormant and unbeaten for over 7 years, cross-referenced in memes and chats for being the impossible level to start them all. If you spend any time today searching through the Geometry Dash servers, you will probably come across an impossible level. Their entire purpose is to be a fun showcase of the absolute ridiculous theoretical limits this game can hold. You might also notice that the majority of these levels have the word silent in their name. And the reason for this is Silent Club. Silent Club was the impossible level to start them all. It alone was so influential in the long term that all impossible levels today usually share the word silent in their name. But why is Silent Club so difficult? What made it stand out? Why did people know it was obviously hacked back then? Well, let me show you. Let's start with the first thing that players get confronted with when they enter the level. The orb spam. For this, the player needs to hit these gravity changing orbs fast and controlled enough to make it through this gap and land with the right gravity. This is the first thing players have to do to get past 6% on the level. And the parts after this one don't step down either. Remember how I said Cataclysm pushed the ship game mode for the time? Well, <laughs> look at this. This was before Cataclysm. Just insane stuff. Did I mention that this is actually one of two orb spam parts that exist in the level? The second one reduces the row of orbs to two and makes it way longer. This is insane. Obviously, the creator did not legitimately beat this. If you grabbed a copyable version of this level back in 2014, you would find a stray ship portal hanging around at the top of the first part. You see, back in 2014, there was a glitch in the game. If you entered a precise input of buttons, right as the player overlapped with a blue orb, you could make the gravity change effect the next attempt. So at the start of the next attempt, you would fly up into the ceiling, touch the ship portal, and from there on out, you would have a free path to the finish without having to play anything. This level wasn't meant to be played at all, and I think that's the most genuine way I can put it. 
It was clearly built with the intent to boast about its difficulty. I bet the creator itself never intended it to be attempted legitimately. But against all odds, seven years after it was uploaded to the servers, in October 2020, the impossible level to start them all was actually beaten. No, 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 dude. No, there's no way. The player's name was Lucolizer. I cannot tell you how insane this is. This level was never meant to be beaten, but players had just become so good over the years that we finally caught up to what was thought to be impossible back in 2014. To this day, this level still sits on the 28th spot on the hardest levels ever to be beaten. And I'm glad it did. I remember finding it on my phone all the way back in 2015 and going, how did someone even beat this? I obviously didn't know back then how easy it was to cheat levels, but the impact this level had on everyone who played it cannot be understated. It was the hard level you would meme about. It was the original impossible level and finally it had been conquered. But wait, hold up, only 28th? How are there 27 levels harder than this? <sighs> well, Ever since Cataclysm, there's been so many amazing achievements and breakthroughs in the community. From players finally overcoming cheaters with levels like Silent Club and Sonic Wave, to the absolute insanity that is currently the top 5 hardest levels ever. This game is filled with hundreds of levels who all stand today as amazing achievements of both creativity and player skill. Sadly, I can't sit here and talk about all of these without making this video at least 15 hours long. The past 9 years really have been an amazing experience to be part of this community. Seeing all of these giants fall one by one by one truly was a magical experience. While on the creative side of the game we probably will never run out of stuff to do, on the player side I feel like the community is approaching a crossroad. We have records of players spending over 200,000 attempts and countless months on levels. But at what point will we hit that hard concrete wall that won't allow anyone to pass anymore? At what point is a level too hard to reasonably attempt to beat? You can take any point in time and say it's reached its peak. Like in two weeks, look, we could say yeah, it's reached its peak. In two years, we could say it's reached its peak. You know, we could have said that two years ago. As long as this game has people playing it, they're always going to be trying to make something the new hardest. If you would have asked me that question a month ago, I would have told you about this level. Silent Club Step. You might be really confused right now, because we literally just talked about a level called Silent Club. You see, Silent Club is the version made by Black P2S Full in 2014. And you know now that that one has been beaten by Lucolizer in 2020. But something I haven't mentioned is that in 2015, a level was released that was inspired by the old Silent Club from 2014. People considered the 2014 Silent Club unbeatable. But even with that, in 2015, someone decided to go back, look at Silent Club and create their own version of the level that was even harder. Ever since then, this level basically has haunted the community. It's a level inspired by the old version, but it brought the difficulty to a level that objectively was considered impossible by everyone. While this is ridiculously hard, this I would personally consider unreasonable to attempt. The level contains multiple frame-perfect jumps, the straight flight is not even straight at all. These jumps are all frame perfect, so they became known as the 8 jumps of hell. This level was meant to be that concrete wall. The creator Salent made sure all sections are theoretically possible, but they all pushed the human limit like no other level had at the time. This level sits to this day on top of all other impossible levels. No other level has ever gained more attention because of its difficulty than Silent Clubstep. For the past 8 years, this has remained unbeaten for obvious reasons. But 2 months ago, something happened that shocked the entire community. Oh, I got 65 on Silent Clubstep! I got 65! I cannot believe this. As someone who has been around in the community ever since this level was released, to be able to say someone got this far into Silent Club Step, it feels like I'm lying to you. It feels like a meme. After seeing Vision make it to 65%, I'm a believer. I truly believe that one day this thing will get beaten. And it might be sooner than we think. Honest question, you think someone's ever gonna beat that?
Oh, yeah. 100 percent? Yeah. 100 percent, yeah. Vision currently has gathered over 397,000 attempts. Dude, if you're watching this, I wholeheartedly wish you the best of luck. You have the entire community behind you. If Vision beats this, it will not only mark the end of an era, but it will also go down as one of the most important moments in Geometry Dash history. Maybe, just maybe, that's when we will finally hit the infamous skill ceiling we have been fearmongering about for nine years now. Until then, however, this is what we have achieved. Years of pushing the limits of what was considered possible. From Cataclysm, to Ice Carbon Diablo X, to Sonic Wave, to Silent Club, to all the other insane levels currently on the list. These players have taught me time and time again that all it takes is for one person to take that first step into the unknown. Not you.